friend of sinners, grant us forgiveness, lift our own cast spirit, heal us and save us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. As we prepare to celebrate this Eucharist, we take a moment and we turn to God in the spirit of pardon and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, Ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the time of your beloved Son we may abound in good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. The Holy Spirit says today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion, as on the day of the testing in the wilderness where our ancestors put me to the test, though they had been seen my works for 40 years. Therefore, I was angry with that generation. And I said, they always go astray in their hearts and they have not known my ways. As in my anger, I swore, they will not enter my rest. Take care, brothers and sisters, that none of you may have an evil, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God, but exhort one another every day, as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by the des deceitfulness of sin, for we have become partners of Christ. If only we hold our first confidence firm to the end. The word of the Lord. If today you hear God's voice, harden not your hearts. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture and the sheep of His hand. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice. Do not harden your hearts as at Maribon. 
As on the day at Massa in the wilderness, when your ancestors tested me and put me to the proof, though they had seen my work. For forty years I loathed that generation and said, there are a people whose hearts go astray and they do not regard my ways. Therefore, in my anger I swore, they shall not enter my rest. If today you hear God's voice, harden not your hearts. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. of the kingdom and healed all who were sick. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. A man with leprosy came to Jesus begging him, and kneeling he said to him, If you choose, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him, and said to him, I do choose. Be made clean. Immediately the leprosy left him and he was made clean. After sternly warning him, he sent him away at once, saying to him, See that you say nothing to anyone, but go, show yourself to the priest, and offer for your cleansing what Moses commanded, as a testimony to them. But the man went out and began to proclaim it freely and to spread the word, so that Jesus could no longer go into a town openly, but stayed out in the country, and people came to him from every quarter. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Our reading today, in a nutshell, summarizes really what it is that troubles the divine human relationship. The man asks him, if you choose, you can make me clean. And how often have we thought, why is God not simply choosing to solve our problems for us, to simply remove all that bothers us, all the difficulties that we encounter in life? It's this great mystery why we have to deal with suffering, with illness, with death. It's one of the major difficulties to overcome in a life of faith, and we never fully understand it. It always stays one step beyond our understanding. But in a very small nutshell, we see it here. Of course, God desires to heal us. Of course, God offers us his healing. And of course, we receive it in our relationship with God through Jesus Christ. We are being healed through the sacraments, through the Word of God, through the life of the Christian community. We are being healed, what matters the most, in relationship, in closeness with each other and with God. But in order to be truly healed, we must be obedient. We must be able to trust in God, to live in the happiness of knowing that God saves and all we have to do is accept the saving we have to be able to follow God's commandments, including working within the community in which we live. Which is why this man was told, go show yourself to the priests of his people and acknowledge that you have been healed, but keep it to yourself other than that. Don't make it a spectacle, because the mission of Christ must continue. But of course, it turns into the spectacle. It turns into the grand events that we read about later, 
which leads to too much attention, the wrong type of attention, and to the cross. And this is so typical for the divine human relationship that we try to take control ourselves instead of allowing God to take control of us. To truly live in the happiness of being saved, we have to trust in God, simply because He is the good in its fullness. He is our salvation, and we are indeed healed by Him. God chooses to heal us. Our duty is to embrace it. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as a saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong, and as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this guest we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was threatened and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be put out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. And profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Christian, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy will be done, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that with the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called at the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should, should enter under, under my roof, but only say the word, and my and soul, soul shall, shall be healed. 
my Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. What is this joy of loving hearts? The fount of life, the light of all. From every bliss that earth imparts, we turn unfilled to hear your call. Your truth unchanged has ever stood. You plead with all to call on you. To those who seek you, you are good. To those who find you, life is new. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to a new life, we may always glory in your gift through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank you.